Okay, so we're diving into some seriously intense lyrics today. Oh, yeah. Uh, going deep into Death's album, Spiritual Healing, for this deep dive yeah. to really explore the themes. Right. What kind of journey are we in for? Well, spiritual healing is really fascinating <laughs> because it's not afraid to look inward at all, mm. even while it's like screaming outward, you know, yep. and it tackles these complex social issues. Uh -huh. But right alongside those classic death metal images, right? this isn't just about gore and horror, Yeah, even if at the surface level it seems that way. Yeah, just even the song titles themselves oh, totally. really hit you hard like living monstrosity, altering the future, defensive personalities. Yeah, yeah. Just reading those, you get a sense of like yeah. the serious tone of this album. Absolutely. And the lyrics live up to those titles, for yeah. sure. All right. Living monstrosity, for instance, uses such intense, almost physical language. Okay. It's like it puts you right in the experience of drug addiction and its impact on newborns. Yeah. It forces you to confront a very, very painful situation. It almost feels like a deliberate choice to juxtapose something. Yeah. So sensitive like that with such intense music. Well, what I think is so fascinating is how death manages to present okay. different perspectives on these really, really tough issues, okay. all within this incredibly intense musical style. You know, yeah. so yeah. for example, in Living Monstrosity, uh. you have these back to back lines. Okay. Some say she's naive, she's a stupid bitch, and then right after, Fuck. some say to forgive, guilty, she should die. Oh. You know, and it's like yeah. you're thrown into the middle of this heated debate, yeah. but with this sonic backdrop, yeah. that is anything but subtle. Right, and that's such a good point. It's like yeah. the music itself yeah. becomes part of yes. the message. It's not just what the lyrics are saying. Yeah. It's how the music makes you feel those words. Exactly. Yeah. And this weaving of really intense music with these morally ambiguous lyrics. Right. It happens in other songs, too. Right. Like, um... Altering the future. Okay. This one grapples with abortion. Wow. And capital punishment. Wow. Using those signature death metal elements. Yeah. To make you feel the weight of those topics. It's almost as if. Yeah. By presenting these like controversial topics mm -hmm. in such a stark and unflinching way. Yeah. Death is challenging the listener to think critically. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. To really grapple with their own beliefs. Yeah. about these topics, yeah. the lyrics don't tell you what to think. Yeah. They present these brutal realities. They do. And it's like they're asking you, what do you believe? And that kind of challenge, I think, yeah. can be a lot more unsettling oh, yeah. than even the most brutal guitar riff. Totally. Don't you think? Yeah, there's something about that <laughs> intensity that makes you pay attention, mm -hmm. even if the topics are uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? For sure. It makes you realize that death's spiritual healing yeah. isn't just about darkness and despair right it's also about facing these like really difficult truths and speaking of facing difficult truths okay um spiritual healing doesn't just focus on these societal issues right it also dives headfirst into personal struggles okay really exploring the inner workings of and, the mind right like within the mind yes that song seems to be all about looking inward yeah you know confronting yeah. your own fears yeah it's interesting how the lyrics encourage that self-reflection there's a line in, within the mind that always gets me. Oh, yeah. It says, um, look through the fake from what is real, making decisions by what you feel. Wow. And it's just such a powerful message yeah. about self-awareness and trusting your gut yeah. delivered in this incredibly heavy musical package. Yeah, it's almost like a self-help mantra. Right. Hidden within a death metal song. Exactly. That's so cool. And then you have defensive personalities. Yes. Which seems to touch on themes of mental health yeah. and trauma. Yeah, it's like a psychological study set to music, mm. you know? Yeah. The lyrics paint this picture of these fragmented personalities okay. trying to cope with trauma. Wow. One of the lines that always stands out to me is, one mind divided into three for every problem a personality. Wow. You know, it's surprisingly nuanced. All right. Especially for a genre that's often perceived as being very straightforward. It's like death is challenging those perceptions. Yeah. You know? Totally. Showing that even within the most extreme forms of music, uh -huh. there's room for complexity and introspection. Yeah. And that, that complexity yeah. is part of what makes their work so compelling. Absolutely. It's more than just noise. It is. It's like an invitation to really think. 
It's that unexpected juxtaposition yeah. that makes spiritual healing so interesting to analyze. Yeah. And we're just getting started. Right. There are layers to this album that just keep drawing you in, wanting to understand more. It's true. And just when you think you have a handle on right. their approach to like inner turmoil, uh, spiritual healing kind of throws you back okay. into the whirlwind of societal hypocrisy. Wow. You know? It's like they're always pushing the listener, yeah. challenging them to confront all these yeah. different facets of what it means to be human. And they don't hold back at all. Yeah. The title track, Spiritual Healing, is mm -hmm. a prime example. Okay. It's just a full-on critique of religious extremism um, and the violence that can happen yeah. in the name of faith. It's definitely a no-holds-barred kind of song, oh, you know? Yeah. Even the music mm -hmm. has this raw, almost chaotic energy totally. that reflects the themes. You mentioned earlier how the music enhances the message, yeah. and I think that's definitely happening here. Right. But even with this like really direct, okay. confrontational approach, yeah. Death still manages to weave in these thought-provoking questions. That's awesome. interesting. For example, there's a line in Spiritual Healing that asks a justified torture. From this, may others learn. Wow. And it just makes you stop and think, you know, yeah. <laughs> are they condemning all forms of violence? Right. Or are they saying that even the most extreme actions yeah. can have these unintended consequences? Right. It's that complexity that elevates it. Yes. Beyond just being angry or aggressive. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. It's engaging with these ideas yeah. on a deeper level. It is. And speaking of engaging with challenging ideas, okay. low life seems to be taking aim at superficiality. Absolutely. And the people who thrive on tearing others down. And what's really interesting about that one okay. is how it connects the emptiness of that lifestyle okay. with the actual sound of the music. Wow. It's like they're using the music to make you feel yeah. that hollowness and discontent. It's interesting how they take these big abstract concepts yeah. like superficiality and consumerism yeah. and make them feel so immediate, so visceral. It's that clever interplay between yeah. what they're saying yeah. and how they're saying it right. that makes it so powerful. It's about feeling it. Yes. And spiritual healing takes us on such a sonic journey. It does. You know, yeah. We go from these intense societal critiques to the deeply personal uh -huh. and then bam. Yeah. It's like we're thrown Head first totally into that. this science fiction narrative with genetic reconstruction. That one's a great example yeah. of how death wasn't afraid to experiment. Okay. To push the boundaries of what death metal could be. Yeah. It explores using technology to extend life. Okay. Eliminate disease, even like control evolution. Wow. But it's definitely not presented as some kind of utopia. Right. It has that classic sci-fi element of be careful what you wish for. Exactly. Like, are we really better off? manipulating our very essence yeah even if it means we could conquer disease mm -hmm. or extend life and the lyrics definitely reflect that cautionary tone okay for instance you have lines like yeah replacing what is real by using technology oh and a mind without emotion oh, oh. so it definitely suggests a future yeah where humanity maybe lost something essential yeah in this pursuit of perfection it's so fascinating how death just seamlessly weaves I know. all these different genres and thematic elements yeah. into their music. That's really cool. But as diverse as spiritual healing is, mm -hmm. it always seems to come back to that central tension we talked about earlier, the oh. juxtaposition of brutality and introspection. It's that tension yeah. that gives the album its power. Hmm. It's ability to really make you think yeah. and challenge assumptions. And just when you think you've got a handle on that tension, right. spiritual healing throws one final curveball oh, with killing spree. Oh, yeah. Taking us deep into the mind of a killer. It's a powerful ending. To a powerful album. Yeah. It's this chilling portrait yeah. of someone who's on edge, right. ready to just unleash everything yeah. on the world. There's something about the way they describe yeah. the killer state of mind mm -hmm. that's almost sympathetic. It's true. You know? Yeah. It's like they're making us confront the humanity, right. the internal struggles yeah. of even the most seemingly monstrous people. And that's what I think is so important because yeah. it speaks to how deep and complex their songwriting is. Right. Even when they're talking about extreme violence, 
they still explore yeah. all those little nuances of yeah. human emotion. Right. There's that line, greed before despair, suspicion starts to grow. Mm-hmm. And it kind of hints at yeah. the killer's own struggles. Yeah. Like, maybe this outburst right. didn't just come out of nowhere. It's like even in the darkest corners right. of the human psyche, they're finding those glimmers of complexity. Uh huh. Those moments that make us really question Totally. Our own understanding of good and evil. For sure. Of right and wrong. Absolutely. It's uncomfortable, but it's also incredibly powerful. And that discomfort. Yeah. That willingness to push the limits. Yeah. To explore these really difficult themes. Yeah. That's what makes spiritual healing so important. It's true. It's more than just music. Yeah. It's this reflection on what it means to be human. Wow. You know? Yeah. In all its messy, complicated glory. It's amazing how... Spiritual healing can be so unsettling, yeah, but also so thought provoking at the same time. Totally, we've gone from these societal critiques, yeah, to like deeply personal struggles. Uh-huh. We even just touched on science fiction, I know, right? And then we ended up in the mind of a killer. It's quite a journey, it really is packed into one album and all within this framework of death metal. I know, it's incredible. It speaks to the band's creativity. Oh, yeah, and Chuck Schuldner's ability to like. Yeah. channel all these complex ideas uh-huh. into such a powerful musical expression. It's like they just completely shattered right. what people thought death metal could be. Yeah. You know, they proved that even the most extreme music right. can have this deeper meaning cool, something think? that makes you think. And that's why it's still such an important album. Absolutely. And not just within death metal, yeah. but within metal as a whole. Yeah, it pushed those boundaries yeah. and really paved the way for other bands to explore these themes. It's inspiring in a way. It is. It reminds us that you don't have to shy away from these difficult topics. Yeah. Even if it's a little uncomfortable. Right. Sometimes the most powerful art comes from confronting those uncomfortable truths. Exactly. And that's what death does so well on spiritual healing. Right. They're not afraid to ask those tough questions. Yeah. Even when there's not an easy answer. And they do it all while creating this incredibly powerful, totally moving, sonic experience. So as we get to the end of our deep dive here, okay, what would you say is like the most important thing for listeners to take away? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway is that art can be found in the most unexpected places. That's true. And sometimes the most brutal exterior hides these incredible depths. And spiritual healing is a perfect example. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a challenging album. It is. But it's so rewarding. It reminds us to never judge a book by its cover. Totally. Or an album by its genre. Right. You know? Yeah. There's always more than meets the eye. There is. Or in this case, the ear. And sometimes those are the best discoveries. Right. The ones where we're surprised. Yeah. Those are the ones that lead to really profound experiences. Totally. So if you're listening to spiritual healing, yeah. pay attention to those moments. The ones that really make you think. Right. The ones that make you uncomfortable. The ones that stay with you right. long after the music is over. Because those are the moments that really matter. Exactly. You know, the yeah. ones that remind us of the power of art. For sure. To challenge us. Yeah. To provoke us. Yeah. And to ultimately make us really feel something. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, this has been quite the deep dive it has we've explored some heavy stuff today yeah we did grappled with some really tough questions yeah and hopefully come away with a deeper understanding of this album it's a powerful one it is well until next time oh keep those minds open yes those ears tuned keep listening and never be afraid to explore the darkness because you never know what you might find